Greetings my friends. Orvitayu Drizzi. We're currently in the magnificent city of La Rochelle, and enjoying this wonderful weather. We have just received the new Du 441, and so we decided to make a video about it. What's interesting about this boat, is that it's representing a change in concept. This, is Dufour's new vision for the future, and a big shift towards making cruising yachts. As you probably remember, Dufour is mostly known for its fast boats, with good portion of a sporty inclination. But apparently, demand is pushing Dufour to make these changes, and like all yacht builders, they must combine two incompatible things. Which is to create more space, and at the same time more propulsion. In this video, we'll see if they have succeeded, so let's go and see this to four for ourselves. My name is Sasha Gorin, and you are on the Interparis channel, where today we have the premiere of DeFore 41, a brand new yacht from the DeFore shipyard. In general, in this work the Italian designer Umberto Felci, is trying to embody two absolutely contradictory things. To make the boat very fast, and at the same time make it more evil, if you know what I mean. And so far he has succeeded. In this yacht, we can already see the features of this amazing Italian style, which were first set on Dufour 470. And then this style continued to live on on the 37th Dufour, and this model became quite popular when it came out. So it's fair to say that the Italian style, and design, are somewhat of a favorite, at least among the buyers. And this new model proudly carries on the legacy of its ancestors. But, if we look closely, we can see that the boat actually became a lot bigger this time around, at least compared to the old models. You can see that the waterline remains quite narrow. So it's evident that with this addition, Dufour is trying to keep this boat fast, but the test drive that will come later on, will actually determine to what extent they have succeeded. I definitely liked what I saw in the video presentation, and surely, it can swim across the beam reach quite well. Let's see what else we can conclude from the outside, for example that the windlass is back outside again. And you might ask why, but it's all because they were trying to create additional living space in the cabins, so the windlass just had to go. There are also changes regarding the anchor box, or chain box. This time around it was made without any access from the outside. It might have been the right call, since if I'm being honest, I can't remember that I ever needed that outside access in the first place. Since the current box is vertical, the chain will not become just one messy pile, as it often does on some catamarans. Here's the bowsprit in its standard position, and a genicker as well, which right now is being prepared for a test drive. The boat is really beautiful, and if you compare it to the previous models, the passages have most certainly become wider, and it has become much easier to walk here. Take a look at this jib traveler, it is now hidden away on top of the cabin, and it's really tiny as well. But I must repeat, that, this, is the concept of the cruiser, and many of the tasks that have been set for this model, require many unconventional solutions, whose effectiveness only time will tell and show. The concept is very clear to me, and it is understandable, at least from a buyer's perspective and people's demand in the market. But now, let's go into the cockpit, and see what's there. Alright, as you can see we made it to the cockpit. And here I immediately noticed something, the De 441 was definitely made to replace the model De 4390, basically making this current model its successor. 
And seeing as it's a status full of responsibility, in this review we will be comparing this boat with a 390, to see how many changes have taken place here, and right away I can tell you that there are quite a lot of those. Starting with the cockpit, it has become a lot wider, and it's not a radical amount per se, but the space has definitely been added here. Here we can see the steering wheels, and steering wheel racks, which we have seen plenty of on the De 437. So this hasn't really changed all that much, but let's still take a look at them. They are quite functional, and this oblique console is very much to my liking, except as I mentioned before, I'm not a fan of black, as it's quick to gather dust and dirt. Let's see what we have here on the transom, and if there's anything to see here. This is how the seats open up. You can do that on both sides, and after that you'll see some tiny steps. The platform has become smaller, I can understand why they did that. When it was larger, too often it ended up being broken after some time, so making it smaller should prevent that. And besides, it became more elegant, with some open cuts on the sides. I like it very much, and I applaud this decision. The most attractive thing about the DeFour models is the grille, which is located in the stern. And absolutely everyone loves this grille, and I like it too. There is a tiny sink next to the grille as well, which is a new feature for the DeFours, and it absolutely makes sense to have it here. At least in my opinion. So far, everything is very well made, and logically too. Now my friends, let's see what we have here, apparently it's a locker for a life raft, which is also a must-have on any boat. And here we have one more locker. I think it's designated to store the gas cylinder, and it's placed on the starboard side of the yacht. Let's see the locker on the other side as well. This one is probably for storing different household items. I think that you'll notice that it is quite capacious enough, and that would be enough to store all sorts of things. Refueling access is very nice, and the stern part of the boat is also made in the most sensible way possible, so props to the designer. And on the right side of the boat, they have placed a good old chart plotter. Here's the 9-inch screen made by V&G, autopilot controls, and quick winch controls. It is worth noting that starting this year, DeFore has made a change from Raymarine to B&G. So if you want to order electronics directly from the shipyard, this is all you will be able to get. But the Interparis team is at your service, and for your yacht we can supply electronics from Furuno, Raymarine, and any other electronics that you like. These are white plastic steering wheels, but they can be in black as well, since this is an optional detail. Steering wheels are made of stainless steel, and I can't recommend them enough. The handle, is in its rightful place. And as long as I can remember, which is about 20 years, since I have been working with the DeFores, this handle has always been right here, with the same design, and the same look. In the case of this boat, we have four winches in place, and I think it will be quite convenient to pull up from this side. Or if you sit on this side, it's quite convenient as well, so working with a winch won't be a hassle, especially since in this case, they are electronic. This winch controls the sails, both the main sheet and staysail sheets, as well as control over the traveler. So basically, you can control pretty much everything right from the cockpit, which is an incredibly useful innovation. Now let's see what else we have here. The table definitely deserves special praise. It is really chic, and the most important update about it, is the thick veneer that has been added here, which is now about one and a half millimeters thick. This update was long overdue, because on the previous De4 model they definitely didn't have enough of it, and despite the fact that the material itself is of very high quality, it really wasn't strong enough to last long. But now we can immediately see that it looks really nicer, not to mention more sturdy, and we also have a pen here. The only question I have, is about this new hidden lamp. When it's in the open like this, it will definitely be in your way, when you try and grab this handle right here, and you can easily break it while you attempt that. But this little guy replaced the huge stationary lamp that often came with many of DeFore's models, as well as Beneteau yachts. A stationary lamp was very cozy, and romantic, but the contacts often got oxidized and constantly shorted out, and it was already impossible to really use it after just one season.
So this lamp is very much welcomed on board, but I would move it somewhere around here, and out of the way. This part of the table also looks pretty good, and here you can place something necessary and useful, like maybe a chart plotter, or even a tiny fridge. And let's take a look inside. Here we have wonderful cup holders, and they're now made of stainless steel, which looks very nice in my opinion. The rest of the compartment is covered with wood, and to be honest, it looks so good that I wouldn't mind living in it. It also has USB charging, which is definitely a nice touch, and the cup holder can be placed on top. The compartment next to it is rather simple, but it's great for keeping all your stuff in it. In general, the cockpit doesn't have many surprises for the Dufour fans, but it's worth noting that we now have two lockers here, on both sides of the seats, which is also important. In the case of a monohull boat, each locker is worth a fortune, and that's something you'll appreciate in the future. Let's unfold the table as well, to take a closer look at it. It looks simply amazing. I think it's an excellent table, and it's quite large too. So you can use either only half of it, or you can unfold it completely. This table definitely gets an A plus from me. Something worth mentioning, is the fact that Dufour is currently developing a hardtop for this boat. But in general, there aren't many surprises in the cockpit, except that it has become a little wider, and the boom has been raised a little higher, but that's basically all. Now let's walk around the deck a bit, to see if there's anything interesting there. Let's take a closer look here. The same leads as it was before, and good old black handrails. By the way, I already see a change that I don't approve of. And I'm talking about the main sheet leads, because the system that they have in place here doesn't seem finished to me. But I think that I have some decent guesses as to why this has happened. Later on we will see that they have made the entrance panel wider, and accordingly the step's width has also increased, so that it will be a lot more comfortable to enter the cabin. So basically, this lead system became a necessary sacrifice for your additional comfort. But I think that we can solve this situation with the technicians. Maybe we can put up some additional blocks, or a separate traveler itself, so it's really not all that drastic. Boomvang is stretched quite well. And here you can also see all the leads coming out, leading to the mast. These are reefs, halyards, and again, there is nothing extraordinary happening here. According to the shipyard, the mast was moved back a little, thereby reducing the mainsail. To be honest, this is a typical situation for a cruiser. And they also added a Genoa, so time will tell if this new system will actually be effective. In this situation you have two options, you can either put up an automatic staysail, or you can use a manual staysail, which is a better choice in my opinion. Let's take a closer look at these travelers. They are so small compared to the previous modes, but again, only time will tell if this was the right decision. Take a look at this, the passage definitely became wider, and you can actually feel it. They also removed all the travelers from this area, and it definitely had some benefits since it's much easier to walk here. Not to mention, that the passage has become much safer, which is only contributing to the family-friendly direction, in which Defour is moving right now. They definitely added more space to the water tank, and unfortunately, I can't show you how incredibly huge this Jenniker is, but believe me it is enormous. There is certainly a lot more space here than there was before, and you can practically feel it. This whole area right here I would cover with artificial teak, or maybe even cork, so we'll see about that. And now, let's a look here. Here are the dock lines lying around, and the good old bowsprit, so nothing is out of place. As I mentioned before, the winch is placed outside, but honestly I can understand why the designer went with this option. I think there was a pretty good reason for that. And now to the salon, let's go. Here the changes meet us right at these very steps. They have definitely become a bit wider, and nicer too, so this passage has become a little wider as well. And let's take a look at what we have here. This is metal, the purest of metals, and your staircase is pretty much mounted into the ship, and it will never let you down, they also went from veneer to laminate, and honestly good for them, this is a very nice option, to make the steps solid and non-slippery. 
So the steps get an A plus from me as well, and all the changes I see in them are just spot on. Although, maybe I wouldn't paint this metal part in white. I'd make it in matte paint instead, but since it doesn't affect any functionality, I really like it. Here is the engine compartment. Standing here is a Volvo engine, with 55 horsepower. It's really cool stuff. But now let's see what we have down here. And as usual, it's a stock of excellent French wine. For each and every single client who orders this yacht from us, we will fill this small cellar with a magnificent Bordeaux. But let's get moving. This particular boat is a three-cabin version with two bathrooms, so three cabins and two bathrooms for the usage all year long. It can be three cabins, or it can be four cabins for a charter version, but what I liked most is that this model has two bathrooms here, and you can make it either a toilet or a shower on this side of the boat. It's great to have options, and I think that many of the yachtsmen will buy this exact version. The bathrooms are absolutely symmetrical in their placement. And as I said, you can also build one as a shower room, and the second one as a toilet. This particular boat has a toilet plus shower setting on both sides. Maybe you can put a teak grate on the bottom of the shower, to make it safer to use, and also prettier and more sophisticated. It also has a decent shelf right here, with a nicely looking built-in sink. But now let's get a move on, and see the cabins. They definitely added more space to the cabins, and completely changed the hatches as well. The size of the bed is 1.6 meters by 2, and they are both exactly the same in every cabin on board. Now let's see what has changed here, and as you can see, the first thing that was affected by the changes is the galley. It became more linear, and I like linear galleys a lot, especially on boats up to 40 feet. They also made a ledge here, and if I'm being honest, I still don't know how I feel about it. On the one hand, they saved space by adding the refrigerator beneath it. And in case you didn't know, this is a refrigerator. But on the other hand, it seems to be in the way, and you'll have to go around it a lot. But again, it's not that big to cause any discomfort, and you can lean on it. As with everything else, only time will tell, but at least we got a big refrigerator out of it. It's definitely large enough, and you have two access points to it. One from above, and one from here. That's all for this nice galley. Everything here is quite solid, the furniture won't stab you to death with its corners. There's a decent sink, and the cabinets now open in this manner. It's all in white, which is definitely considered fashionable at the moment, but I'm really unsure of this choice, so write in the comments how you feel about all this whiteness. Let's move on to the dining area. I don't see any major changes here, but this seat definitely attracts some attention to it. It also has an interesting handle, which is convenient to grab onto, and later move this chair wherever you want. You can also fix this chair in several positions. But as for the uncanny design, I'm not sure what this empty space is for, so be sure to post your best guess down in the comment section. Maybe a big bottle of whiskey will fit in there quite nicely. And it also opens up. There is a latch here, or a button, that allows you to change its position. The table lost its signature cutout, and I profoundly regret it. And it has also lost the bar, so there is no more storage space under this lid. Only this coaster, and I don't even know if it was necessary to make it all, they could have just left the table as it is. This is a pitiful replacement for what was once a great bar, and it really doesn't have any appeal to it. What else is there? You can probably change the color of the table, as there are two more colors available. And again, I don't see any decent upholstery materials, so we can do it ourselves for our dear clients. We use Alcantara, or some other, even more sturdy upholstery material. Now look where they hid the electric panel. It's right here, along with the audio system, and the radio station. I don't think that it was a great solution for the radio, as it won't be all that easy to access and use, and you will probably need an additional handset, or something like this. And now, for the most important aesthetic element, and I noticed it as soon as I entered, and I even gasped a little. This is a pretty panel wall, but it's unlikely you can place a TV here, but the backlight is pretty cool. 
So it seems to be a rather nice wall from the designer's perspective, but on the other hand, you can't really use this wall for anything else. And same as before, I do not know how to feel about this white color, so please let me know what you think in the comments. This pillar is needed when you have a four-cabin version of the boat. If that were the case, the sofas would disappear, and there would be beds occupying the space, and the but in this case, it serves as a functional decorative element, unless it's the four-cabin version. Now let's go to the other cabin, to see what else we can uncover on this Tefor. Of course, for a boat of such size the cabin is quite chic, and it has an excellent size to it. This is its own bathroom, and it will always be here in a three-cabin version of the boat. And it's pretty big and roomy as well. The size of the bed is 1.6 by 2 meters, the same as we've seen in other cabins, and there's a cool soft headboard available. It's really really good, but on a side note, I would change the synthetic leather for something more decent. There's another great but inconspicuous feature hidden here, and it's a wireless charging panel. You can just throw it in here and charge your phone. Of course, I would like it to be closer to the bed, but on the other hand, it is harmful to keep the phone close all the time. Now let's take a closer look at the bathroom. This is a shower plus a toilet configuration, and there isn't anything unusual about this bathroom, except that it is very well made. My friends, this is all for a De441 review, and what a glorious premiere it was. I got to understand the concept of this model, which is being a family cruiser, not for dwelling in marinas. This boat turned out very well, and she has some tricks up her sleeves. Yes, it's not a racing boat, but De4 is now moving away from that concept, and becoming a part of the family market. Which I think is the right decision, since after the pandemic many families have begun to enter the yachting industry. Real estate is not the only thing that has a value in this world, and yachts are also very good investments. I can say that this yacht has a very clear concept, and a well thought out design. As for some additional perks, like extra equipment, some tiny changes here and there, as well as updates to the interior can be provided to you by the Interparis team, since we are always available to provide you with some additional services. If you like this yacht, please be sure to contact us, since it is already available for purchase and more. And if you want to learn how to sail such a yacht, please be our guest, since our sailing school is at your service as well. And I will be glad to help you enter the wonderful world of yachting. My name is Sasha Gorin, this is the Interparis channel, and I'll be happy to meet you at sea. Glory to Ukraine, and see you later.